Welcome back to Elizabeth Plants. I'm Elizabeth and today we're kind of continuing my how to sell pottery, used pottery video and I am doing the how to sell used plants. To a degree all plants are used, but how to sell your collection on something like Facebook Marketplace. Now, this might seem self-explanatory to some of you. However, I promised to walk you guys through my entire moving process. And you might notice that the walls are no longer decorated and I'm missing a shelf and the plants are moved. Uh, that's part of the moving process, but also so is selling off some of my collection. Now I have a six step process to selling off some of my collection, but I do also want to talk to you about the specifics of how I made the decision of what plants I am selling. Now I'm not selling a lot of my plants. I pick the plants that I'm going to be selling based on availability and attachment. So step number one in selling your plants is to pick the plant. And I have chosen to sell anything that I can easily and cheaply replace doesn't travel well or adjust well to new places or isn't doing well or I have multiples of. So I want to asterisk that isn't doing well. Sell is not necessarily what I do with those plants, but I do post them for a like pickup only or like a small fee or something like that. But I just wanted to, to note that that one, I don't necessarily sell, but I do pick it. So for example, I chose to sell a lot of my just regular old syngonium that I can pick up from a box office store or from a box, yeah, box office store, box store, box, from like a Lowe's. I also chose any aloes or succulents that I do not have an attachment to because I, and are not like rare to my knowledge because I can replace succulents and aloe fairly easily in Texas. I also picked anything that I have multiples of or are things like Dracaena. I'm trying to sell all of my Dracaena because they're easily replaceable at something like a Lowe's. Now this, this doesn't mean that I, I chose to sell everything that fits that category because some plants I've you know put a lot of time and effort to and have grown attached to. Um, so the asterisk there is just that if I'm not attached to it. For example, I have several sets of, I've got Brazil and then just the regular Hartley philodendrons. And I have chosen not to sell those because I've grown attached to them. I love the way they look. I love the way that I've, I've grown them. And while it would be easy to replace them, I don't want to. And for these as an example, I know that they travel A-OK -okay and will probably be one of the ones to make it. So, Picking the plant isn't something I can really help you with. That's my way of figuring out what I'm selling. However, it's different for everyone and I challenge you to really put some thought into what plants you'd like to get rid of and why. While my metric is a good one, it's not for everybody. The next thing you're going to want to do is investigate your plant. You wanna make sure that the roots are healthy, there are no pests, no funguses or anything that you can tell reasonably by kind of looking at the leaves very closely, investigating the soil. Um, you can skip forward to my fourth step, which is to repot the plant in whatever you're selling and choose to pull the plant out of whatever pot it's in, investigate the roots in that way if you have a reason to be concerned, but you don't have to necessarily do that. Definitely, definitely, definitely check for pests though. Nobody wants to buy a plant on something like Facebook Marketplace, and then once they go to pick it up, you see bugs. That's really disappointing, and it's also not fair to people that are newer into plants and don't necessarily know how to see all of the pests. So if they pick it up and bring it home to their brand new collection, and you've gone and hidden a pest from them or not disclosed a pest, now their entire collection's infested and they probably don't know it. That's just not fair, that's not cool, that's not okay. Check for pests. And then if you find pests, you are not selling that plant, at least not right now. You are going to treat that plant for whatever pest it is, get rid of the pest entirely, 
and then you can get rid of it. But do not sell a plant that has a pest or anything else wrong with it. It's not cool. The next step may lump in with the second step, but step three is to clean your plant. So you may have already cleaned your plant as a precaution for pests or as a treatment for pests, but if you did not, always clean your plant. Some plants are easier to clean than others. If this means just a rinse down in the shower, this means a rinse down in the shower. You could go leaf by leaf and do a full cleaning with um, pest prevention. It's totally up to you, but definitely clean the plant off. They just look nice or cleaned and nobody wants to receive a dirty plant. Specific to my story is I've got diatomaceous earth everywhere. And so all of my plants are covered in this white powdery um, layer. And well, not all of them, but a good chunk of them. And so most of the plants that I was selling were, or dust just from sitting. So I took everything into the shower, gave it a good rinse down. The diatomaceous earth doesn't come off entirely without intention sometimes. Um, however, I did not have the time to do that. So in the listing, I just would put in the description that white power degree dust is diatomaceous earth, happy to hand clean it for you, but it's pest prevention um, and won't harm your plants or pets. That gives the buyer the opportunity to do their research or to ask you more questions because they are now informed. I've also had people, of course, not read the descriptions and simply reach out to me and be like, what's the white stuff on your plant? Um, and then I've been able to explain and usually that's not a deal breaker at all because it can be easily wiped off if you go with it uh, by hand or just rinse it enough. The next step I've already mentioned, but step four is to repot your plant if this makes sense for you. So if you've got it in a pot that you do not want to get rid of, then repot it in something like a nursery pot or a pot that you are willing to get rid of. And of course, make sure the pot like makes sense for the plant. Don't repot what wasn't a four inch into an eight inch, right? Let's use our, our plant knowledge and be fair to the buyer. Repot it so that you are selling it and photographing it with the pot it's being sold in. Now, I don't always do this because I sell a lot of my, particularly my larger plants, but I do sell a lot of my plants bare root and it is difficult to find large nursery pots without going out of your way to buy them. So I have in that case in the description put sold as bare root pot not included um, and then described in which way I will hand them the plant. And I think this depends on what medium it was in. So if my plants were in LECA, I might just hand it to them bare root wrapped in like a grocery bag or a baggie depending on how large the plant is. And then if it was in soil, I will give them the option. So I will usually say, you know, I'm gonna put it in a grocery bag just to make sure it doesn't make a mess in your car, but it is being sold bare root and I'm not dusting, like I'm not pulling any of the dirt off or I am pulling a lot of the dirt off, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, a lot of people will just bring a pot that they planned on planting it in anyways when they come to pick up the plant if they know it's coming bare root in the soil. And then I will just place the plant directly into their new pot. They'll take it home from there. Um, but if you are selling it in a pot, and I recommend if you're able to, to sell it in a pot, I recognize that large plants, you don't always want to sell the pot and you don't always have a nursery replacement. So definitely repot it into whatever you are selling it in or disclose that you are not selling it in what it is photographed in. And that will get a lot of people reaching out to you interested until they recognize fully that that's what's going on and then they will back out. That's just the name of the game. Not everybody will, of course, but some people see the plant all perfectly potted in this cute pot and they think I want that. And then you say you don't get the pot and they're not as interested. So just know what you're getting into when you're doing that. Definitely terracotta is a great option if the plants, um, if you have access to terracotta in the size you need. Definitely, it's a cheap option. Most people like terracotta. It's not gonna break the bank and it's not plastic. So you don't have to necessarily put more plastic into the world. So buying a terracotta, repotting it into terracotta, depending on the plant, of course, can be a great option for the selling process. Next, you wanna photograph the plant. Now, the photographs are the most important part for selling because that's what people see first. And that's what draws their attention or not. There are definitely some things I recommend in photographing the plant, though I'm not a professional photographer or anything like that. This is what works for me. And so this is what I recommend to you. Um, take a full shot of the plant where you can see 
all of the plant. If the plant is too large and you simply don't have the space to photograph the plant, do your best to get the full plant in shot. If you're able to put it next to a measuring tape, that's awesome. If you're only one human trying to do all of these things and that's not reasonable for you, or you don't have a measuring tape, uh, then don't necessarily worry about that part, but that can be helpful for the buyer if you're able to do that. Then if you're able to get a close-up of both the front and the back of a average leaf on the plant next to um, maybe like your hand or something, but definitely get the front and the back uh, more of a close-up so people can see what the leaves actually look like. And then if it's got any growth points, photograph the growth points. If it's got multiple stalks or stems or branches, photograph that. If it's got a new leaf coming out, you can photograph that though. Note if your plant doesn't sell right away that leaf might no longer be a bud when they come to pick it up. That's the name of the game for plants, so you kind of have to know that when you're buying and selling. But if, if there's anything cool about the plant, photograph that. Like if it's got hairy stems and that's kind of cool for you, photograph that. If it's got, you know, a great aerial root system, photograph that. Definitely photograph anything that's cool about it. And then also photograph anything that is wrong with it. So for example, it's got a burnt leaf, but it's an old leaf, don't worry about it, sort of a thing. Uh, photograph that. It doesn't have to be a direct photograph of every single spot on your plant, right? But if it's something major that is worth noting or not super visible in the main photo, um, either photograph it up close or put it in the description. So just say like, hey, burnt it in the sun once upon a time, but none of the new leaves have this spot on it. These leaves are the oldest, you know, whatever. Disclose everything. You know, if you used to have a pest problem and you worked through the pest problem, photograph the damage the pests have done and said, uh, the pests are no longer an issue. I worked through the pests, but they did leave some damage on the leaf. Uh, photographed, see the images, you know? Not all platforms allow you to caption photographs. So if you can't caption specific photographs, put it in the description and then like put see photos or something like that in parentheses. The key of doing the photographs is to get a huge shot of the full plant, a close up of anything cool or, you know, really bad looking or out of the ordinary. Uh, you're also welcome to just pick off the leaves that look bad and not sell it with those leaves. That's totally an option. And then I didn't really add this as a step, but it definitely should be a step. When you're creating the listing, and I've kind of hit on it throughout this entire video, be very clear. Include the nickname and the full name of the plant if you know it, either in the title or the description. Um, so for example, I'll usually title it like tropical house plant and then the nickname. And then in the description, if I know it, I will place the full name and nickname. Put the approximate height in there. So you can do, if you're selling it with the pot, do from ground to top leaf. If you're selling it bare root, what I will do is from top of the soil to the top of the leaf. And I will disclose what that measurement is for. Um, so I might say 24 inches from soil to the tallest leaf. And also, Put approximately, because plants grow while they're waiting to be sold. And so while it was 24 inches when I posted it, it might now be 25, right, by the time I sell it. So disclose approximately or like at the time of posting and then you can put the date or something like that. Um, most people are gonna get the gist and I've never really found too many issues because most people understand that plants are growing. And on that note, make sure you disclose that it is a live plant and not a fake plant. That will change some people's mind about buying. So I might put live tropical house plant. You, so you want to put the, the approximate height of it, any uh, anything notable about it. Uh, if it has a story, if it's in soil, if you're selling bare root, if it comes with a pot, give the measurements of the pot, things like that. And just like anything else you wanna disclose that's specific to your story for me, I would put pick up only. Or if you're interested in you know a, any offers, you could say OBO or best offer. And this final step is just as important as all of the other steps, but sometimes can get missed, is that you need to keep up with care after you've posted the plant. Just because you've posted it for sale doesn't mean it's no longer your plant. It just means you're trying to get rid of it. And so you need to keep up with care, you need to maintain it, because you've photographed it at a certain health level. And if you neglect it and sell it as a crispy leaf later, people are gonna wonder what's up, and that's also not very cool. 
So keep up with care, keep up with pest control, keep up with all of your regular things as if you are keeping the plant until it sells. That is so important. I, uh, I tend to do this. I tend to forget about the plants that I'm selling, neglect them a little bit or over care for them because I don't want to forget about them and then kill them. Uh, so don't sell a plant that you've killed, even if it was nice when you photographed it. Definitely keep up with care and all of those good things. Then from there, it's just waiting and hoping that somebody buys it, so good luck. So that's kind of my process of selling my house plants. Uh, I saw on Facebook Marketplace, but there are all sorts of things like garage sale, eBay, you name it. I couldn't even tell you half of them. Um, there's buy and sell, buy, sell and trade groups, Facebook groups, all sorts of stuff. Um, but that's my process. That's what I go through and what I have been going through with the plants that I'm getting rid of from my collection. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you do something different or if you have something to add or if this method has worked or not worked for you. I'd love to hear stories down in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you like to watch my moving related content and I will see you next time. <laughs>